The Stuart 7A model steam plant, this is part 11. Customising a commercial T-piece to make a steam inlet fitting. I live in a very small village in the East Riding of Yorkshire. It's a very beautiful place. I also play in a band which are based in West Yorkshire, so I had to drive there on New Year's Eve because the band had a gig at a venue in West Yorkshire. It seemed like a good idea to call in and see my friend Chris English at CME Engineering, which is on the way to West Yorkshire, so I could buy some miniature steam fittings from him. I bought a selection of T-pieces. These are the larger of the two, with a 5 sixteenths by 32 thread to take union nuts and cones for either 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter pipe or 5 30 seconds of an inch diameter pipe. I've shown this before. It's the original steam inlet arrangement with the displacement lubricator, and it's not very good. When originally fitted to the steam chest, the whole assembly was quite loose. So I'm going to improve upon this. The first thing to do is to remove this adapter from the displacement lubricator because it's no longer required. This displacement lubricator fitted to the Stuart engine is not made by Stuart Models. It was bought from Blackgates Engineering and I do believe these are made in Switzerland and they're very nice units. These displacement lubricators are slightly smaller than the standard Stuart ones and they look quite good on a small engine. What I'm going to do is cannibalise this standard T-piece to fit my requirements. You may be thinking, well why do this? Why not make a T-piece of your own? Yes, I can do that and I've covered it in various videos over the years. Making T-pieces is a very easy job with a bit of experience, but doing it this way is definitely quicker. And that's the only reason that I'm doing it this way. I often cannibalise T-pieces like you're going to see me do with this one to suit various applications. In this clip, I'm just checking where I'm going to mount the lubricator. I don't want it to stick out too far, so I'm not going to mount it at the end. I'm going to mount the lubricator like this. The absolute first thing to do is to check the thread. I can see that this is a quarter by 40 thread, but I do appreciate that some of my viewers may not be sure. And the Stuart Models lubricators always use a quarter by 32 threads per inch thread. By screwing on a quarter by 40 threads per inch union nut, it confirms it's a quarter by 40 thread. Over now to the bandsaw, note to self, I must change this blade, it's really blunt. And what I'm going to do first of all, is chop off the front thread like this. Be very very careful because you don't want to chop the end of your thumb off as well. As you can see, my thumb's well clear of the blade. And with my thumb still intact, it's over to the one inch belt sander. I'm cleaning up the face of the union. This is a very quick way of doing the job and with experience you can get it square. But, because this is a tutorial, I'm going to show the more sensible, more accurate model engineering way of doing things. I'm going to use my milling machine to mill off the top face. This will make sure that it's perfectly square. I put a large piece of brass underneath it to support it and make sure that the entire thing sits squarely. And now I'm about to just skim the top of this part. I suppose it's a good idea to chop the thread off on the bandsaw anyway because it makes the milling operation quicker and there's less chance of the part being distorted or destroyed by the milling cutter. The part is clamped fairly lightly in the milling vise because if I tighten it up too much it's going to crush it. So you will notice that all the cuts are not longitudinal, they are transverse. That means I'm going across the part rather than along the length of it. By cutting across the part as you see here, there's no chance of it moving out of alignment. It's just going to stay where I put it in the milling vise. And now, it's over to the lathe. I need to remove the thread at one end. I've actually removed it and here I'm just taking a gentle facing cut across it. And now I'm drilling through the centre of the part, not all the way through, just up to the hole in the middle because if I go any deeper, as you can see, look what happens to the drill. I don't want this to happen. The drill starts to wander all over the place. In this clip, I'm threading the part, once again, not all the way through. I use the quarter by 40 threads per inch taper tap first and then I use the plug tap to go a little bit deeper but only as far as the existing centre hole at right angles to the main fitting. Now it's back to the drilling machine to enlarge the hole in the right angle part. I'm using a twist drill bit which is 7 30 seconds of an inch in diameter tapping size for quarter by 40 threads per inch. Here I'm using a quarter by 40 threads per inch tap to tap the hole. I'm doing this in the drilling machine also. That will ensure that the thread is perfectly aligned in the hole. Now the time has come to fit the parts together to see if they do fit. 
First thing to do is take off all the ancillary pieces of equipment from the displacement lubricator, starting with the oil control valve, followed by the top cap, and finally the small tap at the bottom. As this is a displacement lubricator and the oil is displaced by water, this bottom tap is used to drain the condensate and there's still some water left in it from the last run. Now is a good time to show you briefly inside the displacement lubricator. As you can see there is a cross pipe with a hole in it and depending on how far you open the control valve depends on how much oil gets fed into the steam line as it's displaced by the condensed steam in the unit. The paint has become quite badly damaged on this tea piece by the amount of abuse it's just been given. So with a drop of cellulose thinners or lacquer thinner, which quickly removed the paint, I polished up the tea piece on my polishing spindle, but I didn't video that. Here's a top tip and it's very essential because I'm tightening up the tea piece against the displacement lubricator nut. But before doing that, I screwed a threaded union into the hole to stop the spanner from distorting the shape of the T-piece. And once the T-piece was firmly in place against the nut on the lubricator, I removed the steam union and put it back in my box of steam unions. In order to make sure that the displacement lubricator is in the correct position once it's all fitted together, here I'm having a dry run using a shim washer, because I want to make it so that the lubricator is in line with the cylinder. Shim washers are useful, they're all of a different thickness, so by using different combinations of them, you can get things in the position you want. But in this case, call it beginner's luck, I was lucky because the part fitted perfectly just by using the one shim washer. As everything is okay and lines up just as I want it, now it's time to remove the part, apply some Loctite 542, here it is on the thread, and then refit the part permanently. Most of the operations that you've seen in this video are very routine, but they're only routine if you do them a lot. And in my case, I do just that, and I have done for many years. But if you're a beginner, I hope you find it useful seeing me doing it, rather than trying it yourself and making a mess of it for a first attempt. Now it's time to refit all the ancillary equipment to the lubricator. With the lubricator's top cap and bottom valve in place, all that's left to be done is to fit the regulator valve. Over the years I've done a little bit of experimentation with displacement lubricators and I find the best position for the regulator valve on these things is to fully close it and then open it one turn. And that seems to let through enough oil to lubricate the cylinders and it also allows for a good length of run before having to drain the condensate and refill the lubricator. On screen at the moment I'm showing a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch union nut and a couple of cones. The cone in my fingers at the moment is for 3 16 of an inch diameter pipe and the bottom one is an adapter cone. I get these made by Chris at CME Engineering and they're very useful things to have. This is an adapter to allow me to use 5 30 seconds of an inch pipe. The steam inlet piping on the steam plant which will need slight modification is made up from 5 30 seconds pipe or really these days I should say 4 millimeter pipe. Here's a finished product, I think that looks okay, it looks sort of quite high tech on one side of the engine and it's a lot more substantial than the initial one. Besides which I think the combination of cast iron, black paint and brass or gunmetal looks really good on a miniature steam engine. And that's it for the first video of the new year, stay happy and stay healthy in 2020. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.